monkey who constantly looks as though it's just been electrocuted to a baboon that was treasured by the ancient Egyptians thousands of years ago. Here are the most bizarre monkey species. White-headed Capuchin. Now, any fan of the popular 90s sitcom Friends will remember Ross's lovable, mischievous monkey, Marcel. Well, if you remember that primate well enough, you will realize that it was a white-headed Capuchin. The look is unmistakable, with mostly black fur, a pink or creamy white face, and a crown of black fur on top of the head. Marcel was lucky enough to be on the show because his is one of the most intelligent monkey species on Earth. Their brains weigh around 80 grams, making them larger than those found in bigger monkey species like the mantled howler. Pygmy marmoset. If you happen to be around pygmy marmosets, you know that you have to be careful. That's because at just three and a half ounces, the pygmy marmoset is not just the smallest monkey, but one of the smallest primates in the entire world. Their minuscule size makes them susceptible to being crushed. Just look at how tiny they are. Sitting on one accidentally could be potentially vital. You'll be surprised to hear that despite the meager measurements, these creatures can leap up to a reported 16 feet between branches in the Amazon rainforest home. Emperor Tamarin. Now who knows if it's true, but the story goes that this particular species of tamarin was so named because it bore a resemblance to German Emperor Wilhelm II. Now here's his pictures, and here's an Emperor Tamarin. What do you think? We're not sure, but either way, these small New World monkeys certainly look unique. The species has developed a reputation of being playful, kind, and very social, whether they're in the wild or being held in captivity. If you're ever in the Amazon and run into an Emperor Tamarin, it should be a friendly mating. common squirrel monkey. People recently began considering the common squirrel monkey an invasive species. It seems that they have an affinity for stealing the eggs of endangered birds in the Brazilian Atlantic rainforest, which isn't very nice of them, is it? They're found primarily in the Amazon basin, though for unknown reasons, a group was spotted at the Tehuka Forest in Rio de Janeiro in 2009. No one's quite sure how they got there, though people suspect they escaped from the pet trade. Speaking of which, the common squirrel monkey has become a popular pet due to its curious nature and adorable appearance. Proboscis monkey. Sometimes people look so adorable as babies or little kids, and then when they grow up, they look, well, let's just say, not quite as adorable. Now, unfortunately, this happens to every proboscis monkey. Look at how adorable they look when they're young. Then, fast forward to their adult appearance. Well, no wonder why they're called the long nose monkey. Males especially have the really long snouts. Females, on the other hand, don't look quite as long, just more pig-like. They are found hopefully chilling like this fella on the island of Borneo, where they coexist with the Bornean orangutan. Lasula, experts exploring a remote region in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2007, stumbled upon a pet monkey, the likes of which they had never seen before. In the town of Apollo, a juvenile female monkey was found at the home of a primary school director. Everyone around called her Lasula. The scientists were shocked because while the locals were perfectly aware of the species, the scientific community had never seen or identified the adorable creature before, making it only the second new species of monkey discovered on the continent in the past 28 years. Mandrill. Darwin surmised that of all the mammals in the animal kingdom, the adult male mandrill possessed the most extraordinary colors. It's hard to argue. Check out its backside in this completely unaltered pic. The mandrill weighs around 50 to 70 pounds on average, making them the single largest monkey species in the world. Given how large they can get, it might be surprising to hear that they eat mostly fruit, seeds, and leaves. Gelida monkeys. Constantly looking as though they've just been electrocuted, gelida, or bleeding heart monkeys, can be found in the Ethiopian highlands and the Semian mountains. They look like baboons but are easy to distinguish thanks to that bright patch of skin on the chest, which is less pronounced on females. The diet is unlike any of the monkeys and is primarily and oddly made up of grass blades. Now, you want proof? 
here's a picture of one eating grass. And here's another of a male grooming a female because, well, why not? They're in the wild. So moving on. Snow monkey. Outside of humans, the snow monkey, or Japanese macaque, lives in the coldest climate of any primates. They live as far north as the northernmost point of Honshu on the Shimakita Peninsula, but they can be found throughout three of the four main islands that comprise Japan. Like the white-headed capuchin, the Japanese macaque is highly intelligent. Studies done on Koshima Island, in which sweet potatoes were left on the beach for a group of snow monkeys, yielded fascinating results. The animals quickly learn to wash the food off in the river and even to dip it in the salty sea to give it some flavor. Emerald would be proud. Hamadryas baboon. Scholars have discovered evidence of the Hamadryas baboon in ancient Egyptian religion and found that the animal was revered way back in the day. It was considered sacred to one of the many deities, Tote. A depiction of him here, seen as the baboon from 1400 BC, lies in the British Museum. And while they seem to have a taste for fruit when it's provided for them in captivity, they show no such tendency in the wild, where they are found to eat a variety of seeds, roots, insects, and small mammals. Toke macaque. Infant mortality rates are heartbreakingly high amongst toke macaques in the wild, but if they do reach sexual maturity, they are likely to live a long life of 35 years. Endemic to Sri Lanka, they are easily identified by an unusual whirler on the top of the heads, which looks like a fashion style that could easily catch on with humans. Dusky leaf monkey. Some call it cute and adorable, but we find the dusky leaf monkey more demonic and evil looking. Their fur range is pretty shocking. Newborns are bright orange and yellow, but eventually change to be more gray, with white patches around their eyes and on the stomachs. They only live around 15 years long in the wild, but have been recorded to live up to twice as long in captivity. White-headed Lungua. It hurts us to report, but these awesome looking primates are amongst the most scarce in the world, and they are currently listed as a critically endangered species. The scant population, which is thought to number 70 at the most, can be found on the Vietnamese island of Cat Pa. They look amazing with the bright golden head and shoulders. Between the white-headed langur and the mandrill, the range of colors that monkeys can reach is really hard to believe. Golden Snub-Nosed Monkey. Now speaking of gold, this old world monkey's fur is covered in the color. Spread widely throughout China, the golden snub-nosed monkey has a sparse population of 15,000 at the most. They're able to withstand extremely cold weather and spend most of the time in the canopy. The diet's even stranger than the grass-eating gelida. They prefer lichen, an organism that arises from algae that comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. Red-bellied titi. The red-bellied titi is endemic to the forests and thickets of Brazil. They're just over a foot tall on average and show no sexual dimorphism, meaning mates and gals look exactly the same. Hopefully they can tell each other apart for themselves. Philippine tarsier. Those big eyes that the Philippine tarsier possess are like all species of tarsier, fixed in its skull, meaning that, unlike us, they cannot move them around. To make up for this, they have an adaptation in the neck that allows them to rotate the heads 180 degrees. Even though the eyes are stationary, the vision is acute, especially at nighttime. You won't be surprised then to learn that these creatures are nocturnal. They also use their great vision to secure their favorite food, insects. They have a diet that, unlike most monkeys, consists of bugs and other small creatures like lizards and birds. Endemic to, as the name would suggest, the Philippines, you'd be hard pressed to find these creatures in nature. For starters, they average under a half foot in height, making them one of the smallest primates. Also, they are naturally shy creatures who prefer to stay hidden from view. They've become seriously threatened in recent years from logging, mining, tourism, and low birth rates. Estimates say there are just 10,000 total left at most, and that number seems destined to continue to trend the wrong way. Even when out and about at night, their remarkable vision, along with a great agility, allow them to stay hidden from any approaching humans, save those that possess an invisibility cloak.
de Brazza's monkey. Italian-born French explorer Pierre Savonian de Brazza was a charismatic, easygoing chap who was an important part of France's history. His exploration along the right bank of the Congo in the late 1880s allowed France to establish colonies in Central Africa. And for his efforts, the Congo's capital was named Brazzaville while under French rule. This monkey was also named after the famous backpacker. Though he's long gone, the man would have probably been honored to have such an awesome looking monkey named after him. They have a striking white beard that's matched by the eyelids and muzzle. Their foreheads are adorned with an orange crescent shaped mark. They're also sexual dimorphic, with males weighing considerably more than females. Mantled Howler. Groups of mantled howlers can number as high as 40. Now, what's interesting to note here is that these groups usually consist of mantled howlers that are unrelated. Now, this is because when howlers of either sex reach maturity, they are kicked out of the group. Seems pretty harsh, but that's nature for you. Like many monkeys, this species is affected negatively by deforestation though two of its attributes make it easier for them to adapt to the changing environment than most primate species. Second, they are able to subsist on a diet of leaves. Of all the monkeys endemic to Central America, they are the only ones to eat large quantities of leaves. This is great for the overall survival of the species, but it also makes individuals lazy because there's just not a lot of nutrients or energy to be had from leaves. It's for these reasons that the mantled howler spends the majority of its time resting and sleeping. Red Shank Duke. Now these monkeys are along with a few other mentioned. Now these monkeys are, along with a few other mentioned, blessed with some pretty startling colors, as you can see from this little fella at the Singapore Zoo. Pretty epic looking, aren't they? They're native to Southeast Asia, and like too many monkeys, they're considered an endangered species. Their main threat is humans, who hunt the Red Shank Duke and destroy the habitats. <laughs> 